Welcome to the Introduction to React course. This course will span multiple videos and it will cover the core concepts of React in depth. We'll start from zero with React, assuming you have no prior knowledge about the library. A good understanding of the core web technologies, HTML, CSS and JavaScript is required. You also need to understand how Node.js apps work and how to use the Node package manager before you start learning React. In this first video, we'll introduce React and do a high-level overview of what it does. After that, we'll set up a React project and write a simple component. So what is React? React is a JavaScript library used to build user interfaces. It sounds rather simple, and that's the whole point. React is not built to be a large mega framework used to build an entire web application. Its sole focus is the user interface. React is an abstraction layer above the rendering API. In this course, we'll talk about React primarily in the context of the web where the rendering API is the document object model or DOM API. But React is not limited to the DOM or the web. You can use React to render user interfaces on mobile and desktop applications using React Native. The core building block in a React application is called a component. Components are fragments of user interface. A React application is simply a composition of multiple components. Components are dynamic and they have their own properties and state. A core feature of React is that it reacts, hence the name, to state changes and reflects them in the rendered user interface. This is the simplest overview of React I can give you and we'll go into each of these concepts in depth. But I think you should have a general idea of what we're going to talk about before we deep dive into the specifics. Let's now create a React project. We will use an old command line utility for that called create react app. It will scaffold a starter project with all necessary dependencies to build and run a react application. I have my terminal window here and I'll use npx to run create react app. The simplest use case is to type a single argument and that will be the project name. The utility will create a new folder with the same name and generate all necessary project files inside. As you can see, the React application is just a node app. As with any node app, we'll start with the package JSON. You can see we have a few dependencies for testing. Create React app uses the Jest testing library, and these are additional testing utilities like Jest DOM. We have React, of course, and React DOM. React is the core library, while React DOM implements the interaction with the document object model API. React Scripts is a library of node scripts used to build and run the application using Webpack, Babel, and other build tools. As you can see, all scripts are running using the React Scripts dependency, and their source files are not currently available in the project folder. If you need to modify the scripts or want to change the dependencies to a custom configuration, you can run the eject script. It is a one-way operation that will basically expand React scripts to the project folder, including the source files, developer dependencies, and configuration files. You should not do that unless you really need to, as it clutters the project unnecessarily, and it's absolutely unnecessary while learning React, so we'll leave it like this. Next, we have the default ESLint config, which just extends the default React app rules and React app jest for linting of the test files. Lastly, we have the browser list object, which is used to specify the build targets for production and development. Create React app also creates a git ignore file. It includes all the basics like node modules, the testing coverage folder and build folder, plus environment files. Before we export the source files, Let's run the application using the start script to see what we currently have. The browser opens automatically and as you can see we only have an image, a headline that gives some indication from which file to begin and a link to the documentation. Let's see how that is rendered. We have the public and source folders. Let's first check out the public folder. We have a fav icon file with the react logo, two react logo png files with different sizes, a manifest.json file which is used to specify pwa properties like the name of the application, theme colors and icons. These are used when the react web application is installed as a pwa on desktop or mobile devices. We have a basic robots.txt file and most importantly an index.html file. Looking at the head we have some basic meta tags for charset, viewport, title and description. 
It says that take a look at something interesting. The favicon tag is using the public URL macro with two percentage signs. This file is built and this URL will be replaced with the public URL route. In the body we have a no script tag describing that you need JavaScript to run the app and only a single diff with ID root. This is where the entire application will be rendered. As you can see a JavaScript file is not included. That will also be done when the file goes through the build. But let's now take a look at the source directory where the actual source code of the application lives. We have two miscellaneous helper files, setup tests and report web vitals. Setup tests just imports the JS DOM module which gives you additional DOM testing capabilities. We will ignore that for now as we won't focus on testing in this course. Report web vitals exports a single helper function. It accepts a single parameter on perf entry and as you can see the parameter should be a callback function. This helper function just uses the web vitals dependency which reports performance metrics like time to first byte and largest contentful paint. You can use this helper function to walk them in the console or send them to your analytics. The entry point of the application is the index.js file. Here we import react and react dom. We also include the index.css file which as you can see only includes some margin reset and font rules. As create react app is using webpack we can import css files right away. We are also importing app which is a react component. We will take a detailed look at the app component in a moment. And finally the file imports the report web vitals function. Below the imports we can see what the index file actually does. It creates a root using the create root method of react dom. As you can see the root is just the element we saw in the index.html file. The newly created root object now has a render method and in it you see a weird XML syntax written as the parameter of the JavaScript function. This is called JSX or JavaScript XML. It is a mixture of JavaScript and HTML with the XML syntax. You see here the app component which we imported from the app.js file used with XML syntax. Let's take a look at the app.js file to get some clarity. As you can see app is just a function that is being exported by default but it also returns JSX. In this case that JSX consists of basic HTML elements like diff, header and image. App is a React component, more specifically a functional component. A component accepts props as inputs. In this case there are no inputs and returns React elements. The app.js file also includes an SVG and imports it as Wogo. With the default webpack configuration in create react app, Wogo will be the route to the SVG image in the build application and it's used in the source attribute of the image tag. Here we see the curly braces syntax. It's used in JSX to include JavaScript expressions. You can write any expression within the curly braces and the return value will be evaluated in place. In this case that will be a string, the path to the SVG, but more complicated expressions can be written that actually return React elements. This only scratches the surface on JSX and React elements and we'll talk in depth about them and how they work internally. But for now let's clean up the necessary files in the project and write a component. I remove setup tests and report web vitals as we don't need them for educational test projects. The logo SVG is going as well. I will leave this index CSS as it only sets fonts to the system ones. I'm removing the app.test file as we are not concerned with testing right now and the app CSS file as well as it contains specific styles for the demo app component which we don't need anymore. In index.js I remove the report web vitals line as it's not available anymore. I remove the logo and app CSS from the app component and leave only an empty div here for now. Let's create a new component. I'll call it hello and it will basically just render some textual content. I'll create a new file called hello.js and create a new function. As this is a component it should return an element. So I'll return jsx which will be a paragraph with some textual content. Hello. This module will export the function by default. Let's now render this component in the app component. We have to include it as we would any javascript module. Then we can use jsx to use the new component. Let's run the application with npm run start. As you can see the component is rendered correctly. We can also rewrite the component as an arrow function to shorten it significantly. As I mentioned components output react elements and accept input in the form of properties. If we go back to the hello component we can add the props as the first parameter of the functional component. Props is just an object and for this component I would like to have a name property. It will be a string and also it will be output in the paragraph. I can use the curly braces syntax to access the props name 
same property and add it to my JSX output. Now the next question is how do we pass the prop when we call the hello component? In JSX the props are passed as XML attributes. So in my app component I can add the name attribute to my hello component and set it to the string John for this example. As you can see we now have rendered hello John in the browser as expected. This only scratches the surface on components, elements and JSX. But I think it's important to write a little bit of code in this first video so that you can get a sense of what using React is like. In addition, you need to have the development environment set up in order to experiment as you follow along the videos in the course. In the next video, we'll deep dive into JSX, React elements and components. You'll understand how they work internally and how to use them efficiently.